Hi and welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. Just want to do a, a quick update on my Panasonic Lumix G80 slash G85. I think I've also heard it called a G81. It's the G7 Mark II essentially. I'm recording on the G7 now. And uh, for people that have asked, this is a Spes Speedlink uh, microphone just plugged, just a lapel mic plugged straight into the camera. Now I'm gonna sort of do an update on the camera. I've had it for a week or so now. I haven't had a great deal of use with it, but um, enough to sort of know whether or not I'm gonna keep it, whether I like it, uh, pros and cons, things like that. But also to answer a few questions that have been coming in as well on the comments. Now, one of the uh, things that's come up a couple of times is, is the size and people are saying, oh, you know, the the idea of micro four thirds is it's small and compact and light and with these sort of more slr style bodies you're pushing the the, the system towards the like the uh, the small nikons and the small canons but i just want to show you you really not this little bag here you can see by the size of my hand how big this is this little bag here is my entire kit bag that's that's it now that's what i have you can see it's very narrow it will take an iPad in the back, uh, an iPad mini, sorry, in the back. So it's about the size of an iPad mini. In the sides, I've got the bare minimum just uh, in here. I've just got a circular polarizing filter. And in this side, I've got my spare SD cards and that should be in there, which is just a, a tripod mount that's in there with the SD cards. And that's it in there. Then inside, obviously, I've got the camera uh, with the lens in one side and then my two other lenses in the other side. And that's it. There's a little pocket there with a, a few cloths and things in, but essentially, that's it for the camera. The camera bag is an Olympus pen bag. I don't think you can buy these anymore. Lovely little bag. It's perfect. So that is my entire kit. Now, the majority of shooting I've done so far has been using the 45mm Olympus 1.8 and paired to this camera, it is stunning. It, oh, well, well, again, my opinion, it is stunning. And a lot of that is down to the image stabilisation, which is now fantastic. And I've used this quite a lot because I did some, uh, I, I took it to the zoo and took a few photos. And I'll, I'll show you those photos as we go along. And this is the Panasonic 45 to 150. So that's my kit. Uh, there was another, I did have another prime lens, uh, which was the 25mm. And it's something I'm toying with the idea because because I've got the 12 to 35 f 2.8 I don't really have so much of a need for really fast uh, prime in that range in the 12 to 35 range I looked at the 17 mil Olympus the 25 mil Panasonic's but I sort of use that lens and because the ISO performance is so much better now on these cameras I'm not finding I need that prime lens in that range but it is something I'm going to look at um, in the future but for now, this is my three simple three lens setup and it works a treat. So I've got in full frame terms, I've got my 90 to 300 mil, my 24 to 70 and my 90 mil um, f1.8. So to the camera, well, first off the handling, it's, it is, as I suspected, fantastic. The only issue um, really I've got is where they've put the mic jack. It's very nice and neat where they've put it, but... If you have the mic in and then you go to turn the screen, it, you can't turn it because the mic jack will be in the way unless you move the screen back a little bit and then put it back. But then if you're, say, doing what I'm doing now, the mic jack comes out of here and it goes over the back of the screen. Whereas with this camera, the mic jack will come out of the front of the screen and drop down there. It's just a small thing. Um, it's just better the way it was when the mic jack was coming out of the top here. I uh, don't know why they've done that, but so that, that is a, a downside. The overall handling is just like the G7. It's very similar to the GH3 and 4, but without the bank of buttons across the top here. But I've got it set up now exactly as I want it, and it, it just works for me. It's fast, it's intuitive. It's um, 
I don't know, it, it, again, when I'm talking about these cameras, it does everything you want very quickly. If I want to quickly change to continuous focus, I just go boom. If I want to go into manual focus, I do that. As soon as I touch the manual focusing ring, I get a punch in. There's no exposure compensation dial on it, but it's simply a, a case of pressing F1 and then dialing it in on the back dial. Very simple. And when you press that function one button, you also get the exposure compensation um, for the flash as well. Um, so that is really no problem. So yes, I would have preferred an exposure compensation dial like I had on the GX8, but you know, one press and Bosch, you're in no problem with that whatsoever. The quick menu has got a function too. That I've just left as default. That works really well. That gets into a lot of your settings. And if you can see a setting on here, you can touch it. And that's the thing I like about it. You can just quickly touch whichever setting you want. Um, and that's all through the menu system, which again, it just makes life. Sorry, I've got a little dog here sat on my get off. Now I'll just introduce you. This is Chucky. And as you can see, he's a top dog. Uh, Chucky, say hello. Say hello to the camera. Say hello. Chucky's staying with us for a little while, and he's quite a cute little boy, aren't you? Yes. And we did a little photo shoot with him, and I'll show you his photos, because we did a little photo shoot with him, and he was a good boy, weren't you? Okay, there you go. Go and sit on the chair. There you are. Right, so where was I? Yeah, t yeah so when people say, oh, I don't need a touch screen, I don't want a touch screen, when you're looking at this menu, there's quite a lot of stuff on there. So if I want to go into the metering, I literally just touch the metering and then I can change it to centre weighted metering. Um, you know, it is that simple. And that's what I say about these people when they say, oh, you know, I'd like my Fuji and I don't need a touch screen. I don't mind using a door screen. Yeah, that's fine. But that's so much easier because you see it and you touch it. You go, oh, I want to change the uh, the speed that I, which I'm shooting at. I want to go into low or super high and I just touch it. And it's it's so simple. Function four button down here I have set up so on my shooting mode. So I have the standard mode with plus one compensation and plus one sharpness. Sorry, plus one contrast and plus one sharpness to the standard picture profile. And that is set um, just because that's how I like it. And then you've got your vivid, vivid, your black and whites, your monochrome. I do like the old monochrome. That is a lovely um, look. And um, so I can get to those quite nice and easily just by pressing the function four button. I've got my ISO, my white balance, and my autofocus area modes all there. Also, if I touch this button on the, the dial here, I then get my front dial is white balance, my rear dial is ISO. Uh, so that's nice as well. One of the things I'm really liking is the fact that the SD card is now in the side. I just wish they put two in, because I think if they put two in, then you could have used this for professional work uh, without it. I mean, you still can use it for professional work, but not for things that are sort of, if you miss if you miss it and if you lose what's on your card, that's the end of it, like a wedding is the prime example. You would not use this for a wedding because there is a chance that you would lose. You know, if you lost your card, you've lost everything. And I think that's where the Olympus OMD M1 Mark II wins and now becomes a potential professional camera because it has the two card slots as well as being fantastic in every other area and that is a camera I'm going to look at and to be honest that Olympus OMD M1 Mark II is probably the only camera that I would look at over and above this. Now I know a lot of people say now the Fuji X-T2 is the one you should be looking at. Um, yeah but I, don't, I like the lens system with this and now that OMD M1 Mark II has got the uh, dual card slots, I think that makes it a fantastic camera for professional work. My only caveat to that was I could not live with the autofocus system in the previous one, but if it's improved or if they've got phase detect working for all of their lenses, all of these lenses, then that is definitely a camera I'm going to look at, but not for a while yet. So uh, image quality <clears throat> is as I expected, it's the same as the GX. 80 slash 85 it's fantastic 16 megapixels is more than enough for what i want even if you're having to crop a little bit into your, sh your pictures you're not degrading the image so much that you think oh i wish i had more megapixels the um the benefit of having a low megapixel count is the um, high iso performance is really good i'm not seeing any problems and it doesn't go nasty i remember with my nikons it would get to a point where it'd go nasty and um my d7000 for instance you wouldn't shoot above 1600 because 
it wasn't that it was so noisy, it's just it wasn't very nice noise. Whereas this, I can go way beyond that, no problem whatsoever. Um, so that's good. The autofocus is fantastic. The tracking is as I expected. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it, it beats a lot of SLRs, but it, it's it's pretty good and it's plenty good enough for what I need. My rate of shots in focus, um, the, the hit rate is phenomenal. Um, I mean, I, I did a little photo shoot with a little dog there. I took 200 photos. Oh, while I'm talking of that, battery life. I used this for a shoot, took 200 photos. I offloaded them all using, actually, no, I went through and deleted all the ones I didn't want. Um, so I'm sitting there deleting on screen. I then ended up with 60 photos, which I then um, Wi-Fi'd across to my iPad, which I then edited it and used the, the ones, picked out the, the photos that I wanted. Uh, and it um, it's basically now I've been using this today as well. I've lost one of the three bars on the battery. So battery life for me is absolutely fine. No issues whatsoever. I took it to the zoo. No problems at all. Um, so yeah, the hit rate out of... Um, you know, those 200 photos, I think I went through and, and found about 10 that were out of focus, that had missed focus. Sometimes that's down to me, the, the dog moving, things like that, you know. But essentially, I'm, I'm getting a really good hit rate on that, so I'm loving it. I haven't done hardly any videoing with it at all yet at the moment. I just haven't had time. I do have a full-time job, and I've been really busy doing other stuff as well, and I just haven't had the opportunity to use it as much as I would like. But obviously, there's more coming. So, so I'll show you a few pictures that I've taken so far. I'm well happy with it. I'm trying to think of negatives, um, but I can't really find any. I'm looking forward to getting the battery grip because that was not a negative, but when you're, you're shooting in portrait, uh, it would be nice to have the battery grip. And I don't, because it's a small camera, the battery grip isn't going to make this a monster. It, you know, it's only going to come out to here. And I think, because the other thing was my little finger dangles off the end sometimes. It just slips off the end of the grip. And when I was carrying it around sometimes, I thought, mm, yeah. I, I remember when I put the grip on the GH3 and it was so much nicer. And I think this is going to be the same. It is going to be lovely. Knobs, dials and everything is exactly as I suspected perfectly weighted you really have to give them a turn there's no buttons to press to unlock or push and hold down things to turn and all that old bollocks which i hate they're just well nicely you would never knock that by mistake you're a real sort of uh, to push it so you're never going to knock it by mistake um the front dials rear dials brilliant no problems with it at all so overall i'm absolutely loving the ah yeah there is the the one downside which annoys me compared to, say, the GX80 is the pop-up flash, you cannot bounce it, uh, which for me is a massive oversight because, to me, that makes that useless. So if you want to use flash, you need to get perhaps one of the little Nissin i40 flash that I had before. That would be perfect on this, but that is useless because if you fire it straight off, it's horrible. You, your best bet is to tone it down by two-thirds to a full stop then shoot and then go from there. If you fire that full power, just uh, in auto mode, you just get a horrible picture. Um, the other the other thing is, is to, to fit something to the front of it, but yeah, the, the flash is pretty much useless in my opinion, because it doesn't, if it, if it bounced, there would be the odd occasion when I could use it, but it doesn't, so you can't. There you go. Um, yeah, uh, image stabilisation, uh, when I turn this on and go into image stabilisation, all I'm getting is normal uh, sensor shift when I've got this 45-1.8 on, it's fantastic. I get the dual image stabilisation for these two lenses, but I'm not getting dual IS-2, the second version, with any of my lenses. I haven't seen that come up, I don't know if it does or not, but the dual image stabilisation I'm getting with these two lenses and the in-body image stabilisation I'm getting with this is stunning absolutely stunning i'm absolutely loving it it is now as good as if not better than in some cases the omd em5 mark ii which was the best image stabilization i've ever used this now in my opinion ever so slightly surpasses it so that is brilliant so anyway that's my um, update on the panasonic lumix g80
There's more to come because obviously I do some more and I get the battery grip. I need to do some more videoing and uh, take some more pictures. Oh, just one, I'm going to answer one quick question someone's asked. Um, is that people are saying that it's a really nasty crop in 4K. It's no different to the G7. So it does crop in when you go into 4K as most of these cameras do. But it's not a horrendous crop. If you want to shoot wide, yes, you will need at least a 12mm lens. Um, or something like this, a 12 to, to 35 if you want to shoot wide, if not the, one of the fisheye lenses. But the lenses are available for you to shoot wide if you want to. There's, in my opinion, no issue with that. Um, so this is GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. Um, I'll see you soon for some more updates. Cheers, bye.